Come on, let's celebrate Jesus one more time. Can we do that? Come on, let's celebrate Jesus one more time. Yeah. Well, it is an honor to be in the house tonight on a Wednesday night. I've never heard that whole Mount Rushmore thing. I'm not sure how I feel about it, but I like it. I think I kind of like it. Uh, many of you would, would, would know, you would have no idea who I am, but my wife, Alicia, and I, who she's not able to be here with me tonight, but uh, we were here for 10 years who did ministry on this property, 4700 Westgate Boulevard, and served, and we were student pastors. We came as student pastor and worship. Uh, we led worship and led the students, and pastors Brad and Cassidy were just kids in the youth group when we got here, so we feel like we kind of helped raise them up a little bit. I think they were about 14 or so, and uh, Caitlin uh, was about 12 whenever we got here, and uh, we had an incredible, incredible 10 years, and this house molded us. I always get emotional talking about it. It made us into who we are today. It changed my life. It changed Alicia's life. My, our boys were born here. We have two boys, and uh, they were born while we were serving here at Christian Life Church in the old days. Uh, of course, I did see on the side of the building, it still says Christian Life Church, but Christian Life Austin is what we call it uh, nowadays. But I love your pastor. I, I love Brad and Cass. Man, I love pastors Rex and Patty, and I know they're watching, and I just want to tell you guys how much I love you. I honor you, Pastor Johnson. I honor you, uh, Patty. You're like mom and dad to us. And Pastor Johnson is, is still my pastor, and he is one of the overseers of our church, North Rock Church in San Antonio, Texas. Are y'all ready for a little preaching tonight? All right. I know this is a church that loves preaching, and so I know that you will help a pastor out a little bit. You'll help me preach a little bit. You'll help me preach a little bit tonight? Thank you. Thank you. I am honored to have some of our team members from North Rock Church with me. Uh, Pastor Winston is one of our campus pastors. Will you raise your hand, Winston, over there? And then I, I knew he was coming, but then I have a couple of other staff members that just kind of eased in a second ago. Uh, you didn't think I was going to recognize you. Elise and Angelina, would you wave at the crowd? A wave at the crowd. I love them. We have an incredible team uh, in San Antonio, and uh, I'm just honored to be here, though, with you guys tonight. And I, I want to read a passage of Scripture, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 41. If you have a Bible, you're welcome to turn there, um, or you can just look at the screen, because I'm guessing it's going to be up there. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 41, then Elijah said to Ahab, go get something to eat and drink, for I hear, everybody say, I hear. I hear a mighty rainstorm coming. So Ahab went to eat and drink, but Elijah climbed. Everybody say he climbed. To the, mount, to the top of Mount Carmel, and he bowed low to the ground, and he prayed with his face between his knees. Then he said to his servant, go and look. Everybody say, look. Out toward the sea, the servant went and looked, then returned to Elijah and said, I didn't see anything. Seven times Elijah told him to go and look. Finally, the seventh time, his servant told him, I saw something. I saw a little cloud about the size of a man's hand rising from the sea. Then Elijah shouted, hurry to Ahab and tell him, climb into your chariot and go back home. If you don't hurry, the rain will stop you. Soon the sky was black with clouds. A heavy wind brought a terrific rainstorm. Terrific rainstorm. And tonight for just a few minutes, uh, because I got a big clock right here in front of me that tells me when I got to shut up. Uh, just for a few minutes, I'm going to talk about drought breaking. Drought breaking. Drought breaking. I, I, I saw a video back at the, it was actually the, it was it the first of the year or the end of last year? 
And I was just scrolling through the socials as I sometimes do. I don't recommend it, uh, but every now and then I'll scroll through the social medias. And, and I came across one of these videos that was, it was kind of back when it was more popular to do the how it started, how it's going thing, if y'all know what I'm talking about. And the video was of how it started was of this beautiful um, uh, lakefront scene where there was a gorgeous dock that was sitting with water all around it and a boat docked there and all sorts of, you know, water sports paraphernalia. That was how it started. In fact, he said, this is what it looked like when I bought the house. And then it said how it's going. And now that dock is sitting on dirt and the uh, there's still a boat in a slip there up off the ground, and there's still various and sundry water sports paraphernalia around, but there was no water anywhere, anywhere. And I actually got to looking just a little bit, just clicked on it, and I realized it was actually Medina Lake, which is a lake that's how, I had no idea this was around anywhere around San Antonio, but it was a, it's a lake that's just west of San Antonio, Texas, and drought has taken a toll on the lake, and where there used to be water, there is no water now. Where there used to be life, there is no life now, even though the, the water sports, uh, you, you know, paraphernalia, it's all still there. This skis and, 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 and snorkels and boats and jet skis and all that stuff is still there. There's, there's no water to play in. And as I got to looking at that picture, whatever it was, eight months or so ago, I got to thinking about us and our hearts and our lives and how sometimes we go through seasons of drought where we've been in this incredible season of where we're flourishing in our relationship with God and everything seems to be going amazingly. And then suddenly, for whatever reason, it could be a number of things, we experience a season of drought. And I just want to talk to somebody in the building tonight. I've come from San Antonio to talk to you about the drought that you're experiencing in your life. And it could be any drought at all, maybe you're experiencing a drought in your joy, like you used to have so much joy. And honestly, on the outside, if people were to just look at you, it would still look like you have it all together. All of the things seem to be in place, but you know on the inside, there's a drought of, of joy in your spirit. Maybe you're having a drought in your marriage. Maybe it's a drought in your passion to accomplish. I, I had a friend the other day who just kind of told me, I'm just struggling with passion to, to even be, you know, to, 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 to be productive. Maybe you're struggling with, with a passion to, uh, to serve. You used to be fired up about serving and serving others. Maybe, you, maybe it's a drought of, of contentment in your life. Drought breakers. I've started leaning into the significance as I've gotten a little bit older, of staying hydrated. Like, it, it, like you don't think a lot about it when you're young and you sweat, you're thirsty, you, you have something to drink. Then you start getting older and your skin starts getting all pasty and, and, and you, you, your joints start aching and, and you have trouble staying focused and you start just thinking, you know, what, what, the least I can do is stay hydrated. And so I've, I've leaned into the concept of being hydrated. I start my morning off with a big old glass of water like every day now. I didn't used to do that. The things you do, you know, as you, as you get just a little bit older. But the truth is, your body tells you when it's thirsty, doesn't it? Your body tells you, like you'll experience a dry mouth or or an achy head or maybe, you know, weak joints or weak knees. If you deprive your body of the necessary fluids, your body will tell you. And here's what I've discovered. Your soul will also tell you when it's thirsty. A dehydrated heart will send a desperate message. It will. It, it might be waves of worry. Come on, somebody. It might be a terrible temper, and you don't even know where it came from, but that person cut you off in traffic, and something came out of your mouth, and you didn't even realize it was in there. It's amazing how dehydrated hearts will send desperate messages. Insecurity, guilt, fear. Come on, paranoia, hopelessness. 
sleeplessness, loneliness, resentment, irritability. And, And I know that some people believe that this is just kind of who I am. The enemy wants you to think that this drought that you're experiencing, that it's just kind of who you are. I mean, doesn't everyone have gloomy days and sad Saturdays? I will say that those feelings, in many cases, yes, they are inevitable. But are they unquenchable? Absolutely not. There is an answer, and I've come to preach tonight about that answer. And I believe that there's some people in the room that are going to take some steps to break the drought that you've been experiencing in your life. The enemy wants you to stay there, but God's got water for your spirit. In the passage that I read from uh, the Old Testament book of 1 Kings, Israel had been in a three and a half year drought, and famine had come along because of that drought. And along with famine, Hopelessness, this sense of hopelessness, like we, there's nothing to eat, there's nothing to drink, how are we going to survive? And on top of that, they were led by an evil king named Ahab and his uh, wife, who is perhaps more infamous than he, Jezebel. You've perhaps heard of that girl. Um, and, and they were leading this nation away from God into idolatry. And in the midst of this challenging season, God raises up a drought breaker named Elijah, Elijah, a prophet named Elijah. And he caused rain to fall and he brought, turned the nation's heart back to God. And I just want to say this before I dive off into this. I believe that God still raises up drought breakers in 2023. I believe God still needs some drought breakers, some rain makers, some territory takers. God is looking for drought breakers. Leonard Ravenhill said it this way, while people are praying for the God of Elijah, God is looking for the Elijahs of God. He's looking for people who in their school, in their workplace, in their neighborhood, low in their city, in their state, in their nation, they will help to break the drought, the spiritual drought, and call down the rain of God. Throughout the scriptures, rain was a type of God's spirit. Water in scripture symbolized so many great things. It symbolized life. It symbolized eternal life. It symbolized freedom, cleansing. It symbolized salvation. Jesus said in John chapter 7, 38, whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. Jesus said in John 4 and 14, but those who drink the water that I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. So while rain was symbolic of life, of God's blessing, of God's provision, in many cases, drought often symbolized God's judgment in Scripture. It suggested that, 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 that we need a miracle from God. Those in need of rain were in need of, of his spirit. They were in need of his word. They were in need of freedom. They were in need of a move of God in their life. And listen, if you find yourself in the room tonight and you need a move of God, you, you know that there's a drought somewhere in your life. Listen, I want to encourage you. You don't have to stay there. You can choose to break the drought today. I want to give you three things, three simple observances from this passage um, that I read that Elijah did. I just want to kind of show it to you. I think it will help some people tonight. It certainly has helped me. The first one comes from uh, verse 41 of 1 Kings 18, where Elijah said to Ahab, go get something to eat and drink, for I hear a mighty rainstorm coming. First thing we got to do, if we're going to break the drought that we're dealing with in our life, in our heart, in our home, is to listen up. Listen up. And I don't mean like a coach in a, in a locker room or, a, or you in, in the minivan saying, listen up to your kids. I mean, listen up. Instead of listening down, instead of listening around, listen up. There are no, there are no superstars in the kingdom of God. And, and Elijah, 
Elijah, actually, the book of James, James tells us, the half-brother of Jesus, tells, that, tells us in, in, in chapter 5 of his, of, his, of his book in the New Testament, said that Elijah was a man just like you and I. But, he goes on to say, but he prayed. He prayed. He listened to the voice of God. That was the difference in Elijah and Ahab. And the thing that's going to separate you from others around you, the thing that's going to cause you to navigate in a healthy, fulfilling way this crazy world that we are living in in 2023 will be your ability to hear God and to obey God. It has nothing to do with your family background or your social status, who your daddy was, how much money is in your account, your gender, your race. It has nothing to do with any of that. It's simply, am I going to listen to what God is saying to me, and am I going to obey God's word? You're not limited by anything else, but we have so much trouble listening up, don't we? So many of us are listening to the wrong voices in our life. We're listening to fake news. We're scrolling 24-hour news. You name it. We're listening to all kinds of stuff that we shouldn't be listening to. We're listening to naysayers and haters and uh, provocators and people who are speaking down and telling you there's no way you're ever going to get out from under this. You you know, your, your mama dealt with this. Your grandmother dealt with this. So this is just kind of who you are. We listen to voices like that. When God is saying, stop listening here, stop listening down, and start listening listening up. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Listen to the God that says, I will supply all of your needs. Listen to the God whose word says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. You got to listen up. Listen up. The scripture says that when Elijah climbed Mount Carmel, it's not really one of the points. I just want to point this out, though. He prayed to God with his head between his knees so as to block out all of the noise around us. There's so much noise around us in there. So much noise. And like it's getting louder and louder and louder. So we have to get ourselves to a place where we, where we do what we have to do to listen up. I was in an airport a while back. Mason and I were flying to do ministry on the East Coast. And, and the airport was packed that day. And, and there was nowhere to sit like right by the gate. And there was all kinds of crazy weather and different things going on. And so the plane was already a little bit delayed. And so I was wanting to hear, you know, every time. They made an announcement, but we couldn't sit by the gate, so we had to go way over here on the side. And we were we were waiting, we were waiting, and 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 pretty soon we heard, sure enough, attention in the terminal. We have, and I'm, I, I was like, I cannot hear what they're saying, so I had to change locations. There was this one girl who was talking on the phone right there in the terminal, as if she was the only person in the airport. You know those people. Don't be one of those people. I know, girls. I know. And then this, 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 we're like, we can't hear what they're saying. So I had to change locations. Some of us need to change some locations. You might need to change your friend group. There may need to be some relationships that need to be severed, some things that need to be changed, some habits, come on, some habits that need to be broken so that you can listen up. Listen up. I want to listen up. I'm not listening to truth. I'm not trying to find truth from from culture. I'm not trying to find direction from a culture that's constantly proving its own confusion, from a culture that is constantly contradicting itself, like with its own arguments, like, well, last week you said this, and this week, okay. I'm not trying to find truth. I'm not trying to find direction here. I'm trying to find direction here. You want to buy a house? Listen up. You're thinking about changing careers? Listen up. You're thinking about moving? Listen up. You're thinking about getting married? You better be listening up. (laughs) But long before you think about getting married, before you even go out on the date, you listen up. Before you even ask her to coffee, listen up. Before you say yes to the coffee, listen up. 
I've, I've, we've talked to, at home about how some people date. They date really unhealthy. They date desperately. You know what dating desperately is like? It's like going to H-E-B during fast week. <laughs> Everything looks good. I want one of those and some of those and some of the, Yes, yes. You can't, can't. Listen up. In everything, I didn't get to where I am, and I've certainly not always listened up, but I didn't get to the place that I am. North Rock is not to the place that it was. CLA is not where it is because, Pastor, listen down here because there's always haters and there's always naysayers. But I've, I've always listened up. I've always listened up. What, what I love about Elijah is he said, I hear, I hear the sound, okay? I hear the sound. Watch this. He said, I don't, I don't see anything that says it's about to rain. I don't, I don't smell rain. I, I certainly can't feel any rain, but I hear rain. There was no natural indication that informed Elijah that it was about to rain. But Elijah was listening up. You know what, believers? We are, we are a little different. We are. We don't just live by five senses. We have a sixth sense. We're a little bit different. The Bible actually calls us peculiar. Now, some are more peculiar than others, to be sure. But the Bible calls us a peculiar people. We don't just walk by and live by five senses. We also walk by faith. In fact, in, in so many cases, it doesn't matter what my five senses are telling me. i got to listen to what God is telling me. I'm not moved by what I see, but I'm moved by what God has said. And that trumps what I see all day, every day. Sometimes even if there's no cloud in the sky, I can still hear the rain. Romans 10 and 17, faith comes by, you know, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Faith does not begin by seeing. Faith begins by hearing. And for someone that says, I need to see it to believe it, okay. But that's not faith. And you're going to have trouble at attaining what you are looking for, stepping into the promises that God has for you, if you have to see it to believe it. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. That's why what you're doing tonight matters. You came to church tonight. And since you stepped into the building, the band has been singing the word of God. We're preaching the word of God. And the seed of faith is being dropped into your spirit tonight. And you're going to hear some things tonight that's going to ignite something, activate something in your spirit. You're doing the right thing. That's why we get up in the morning. And before we go digital, we go biblical. Come on. I want to open God's word. Instead of seeing what Fox or CNN has to say to me, why don't I see what God has to say to me? I promise you that every day of your life, God has a word for you. But we miss them so often because we don't go biblical. We don't open his word and, and read it. If you will open the book, and I, I hear people say, they said, I just can't hear from God. I just can't. H have you been reading your Bible? Well, no, but no, but. Yeah, you're, you're not, yeah, not going to hear from God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. No word, no, no Bible, no word. So, so no faith. And if there's no faith, then there's no, no fruit. You're wondering why you're not producing anything in your life. You're not listening up. Listen up. The second thing that Elijah did was from verse 42, Ahab went to eat and drink, but Elijah climbed. He climbed. The second thing you got to do if you're going to break the drought is you got to climb up. <laughs> you got you to climb up. Ahab could be found sitting. Elijah was climbing. Ahab was eating. Elijah was moving. Moving. What do you, where, where do you want to be over the last half of 
2023. What do you what do you want your life to look like? Come on, in January of 2024. It's going to be determined by the mountains that you are willing to climb. And the idea of well, I'm just going I'm just going to kind of sit here and eat and you know just let God do what God does. It's not how it works. We sit around waiting on a move of God. And God's sitting around waiting on a move of man. He's waiting on you to do what you can do. And the moment that you do what you can do, then he steps in and does what you cannot do. <laughs> Got to move. Got to move. Got to move. Got to participate. Years ago, I've told the story many times, but years ago, my boys and I were at a Spurs game. They were little. And, and at, at, during one of the breaks in the quarter, um, the Spurs would, would do these games and so to keep everyone's attention and to, so sponsors could get their sponsors' ads in. And so this particular game was a Whataburger sponsored, and they brought two people out on the court, and they had these big barrels set up, and they gave them foam French fries, these t- like a pile of foam French fries. They started a timer, and the person that could throw the most foam French fries into their particular trash basket that was covered in Whataburger, um, the person who could throw the most in, one free Whataburger for a year, all right? Now, I, I know that, that excites some of you. It does not some of you. Um, it excited my children. Now, they weren't in the game, but they were like, oh, free Whataburger for a year. And I, I promise you, they're 24 and 20, or 23 and 20, they would do the same thing right now. They still love Whataburger as if they were 10 years old, just as much. And that's fine with me because it's a cheaper way to eat anyway. But but um, uh, so, so, so the person won, and they declared them the victor. But here's what I want you to know. I want you to think about it. The person who won free Whataburger for a year, Whataburger did not send a truck over to their house, back it up into their driveway, and unload a year's worth of hamburgers, French fries, and milkshakes into their garage. No, no. What they did was they gave them a card. And if that person wanted to access their promise, they had to take their card and get in their car and go down to the Whataburger close by and walk up to the counter, present the card, and then they were given the promises. Listen to me. God has given us so many promises in this book, but it's up to you and I to participate. We don't sit on our hands. We do what we can do. We pray. We fast. We come to the house. We invite people to church. We join those life groups. We serve. We do what we can do. And when we take the promises that he has given us and we participate, it is amazing. The miracles, the droughts that can be broken in our life because we moved, because we participated. Where where do you need to move today? What God has for you, listen to me, will require movement from you. What God has for you will require movement from you. What climb do you need to make today? Maybe you need to start inviting your friends to this amazing house of God. What a place to be able to bring your spiritually disconnected friends to. Y'all, when I was growing up, I was embarrassed to bring my friends to church. Like, they said, I'm coming to church. Like, oh, I'm not coming then. Because I was embarrassed. This is such an amazing house with, with like this miraculous spirit and, and so much joy and so much life in this place. Maybe that's the move that you need to make. Maybe there's some people that God's dropping in your spirit even now that you need to bring them to church this weekend. There'll be a better preacher in the house, I, I promise you. Bring them to church this weekend. Maybe, uh, maybe you need to start serving. What climb do you need to make? Maybe you need to join a life group. Maybe you need to lead a life group. Maybe you need a new friend group. <laughs> maybe that's the climb. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, you, you feel like you have to take a shower just when you hang out with them for a couple of hours because there's just so much toxicity. And so change friend groups. Maybe you need to forgive. Maybe that's the climb you need to make. Maybe you're holding on to unforgiveness. Maybe you need to start giving. Maybe you need to start tithing. Maybe, maybe you need to, how about this? Maybe you need to take your, your worship up a notch. 
Maybe you need to start act, uh, actually offering God a sacrifice of praise. Scripture says he's pleased when we offer a sacrifice of praise. I, I know, I, I think the last time I was here, I talked some about worship, and I've, I know I've heard people said, why, why do you want to preach so much about worship? Well, first of all, God is pleased with it. And he, he loves it when we worship. He inhabits our praises. So I want him inhabiting everything I do. I want him in the middle of everything I do. Uh, but, but also, let, let, me, let me submit this to you t- t- tonight. Silence is not the sound of victory. If you had been in my house, and I would venture to guess Pastor Johnson's house, In January, when the Dallas Cowboys finally won a playoff game (laughs) and and beat the demonic Tampa Bay, not not really, I'm joking, they're not demonic. They're just, their quarterback is, but there's, no, but not, not really. But we sent Brady off into retirement, like that was his last game ever. Thank God he's gone. (laughs) I know there's Brady apologists in the building. You're going to be coming up to me. You know he's the goat. He is the great. Yeah, I agree. He is the greatest of all time. But we beat him his last game to ever play, okay? Dak actually beat him. And so, had you been in my house that night, you would not have heard silence. There was all kinds of racket being made. There was jumping around. There was high-fiving. There was, woo! Even the dog was fired up because she gets fired up when we get fired up. She had toys and she was shaking them around and throwing them across the room because the Cowboys won. Because silence is not the sound of victory. I don't know about you, but God's been pretty good to me. He's brought me through some things. He's brought me over some things. He's brought me around some things. He's brought me out of some things. I am victorious because of my creator. The scripture says to shout unto God with a voice of triumph. I have been triumphant. And so I'm going to shout unto God. I'm going to make some noise. Maybe that's the climb that you need to make. Maybe you need to just take it up a notch as it relates to your worship and offering a sacrifice of praise. He climbed. He listened up. He climbed up. And the third and final thing, because this clock tells me it's got to be the final thing. (laughs) Verse 43 says, he said to his servant, go and look. Go and look out toward the sea. Go and look. If you're going to break the drought in your life, you've got to look up. You got to look up. You got to listen up. You got to climb up. You got to hear. Let 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 God's word activate something in you. Let faith be born in you, and then you do what you can do. You climb. You climb. You position yourself to receive, and then you just start looking. Because if God said it, it's gonna happen. If He said it, mark it down. You got to start looking. Seven times Elijah told. Seven times Elijah told his servant to go and look. Go look. I heard some. I heard heard some rain. Like there's a mighty rainstorm coming. Go look. Servant goes and looks. Comes back. I don't don't see anything. Well, go look again. Okay. okay. And he goes and looks again. (laughs) I didn't see nothing. I know what I heard. So go go look again. Still, still nothing there, prophet. There's still, not, still nothing there. I, I know what I heard. I know what I heard. I know what God said. I know what I, I was listening up, and I know what I heard. Go look again. Uh, still nothing there. Oh, uh, you, okay, I already know how this is working. Go look again. And then, and then a sixth time. Go, go look again. No, nothing there. Six times. Nothing is there. But just because nothing was there, Elijah did not stop looking. Some of you are believing God for miracles in your family, maybe with your job, maybe there's an addiction situation, maybe there's 
a sickness, maybe like a couple that I just talked to this week that they've been trying to have a child for years. And they believe, they believe, they believe, they're believers, they trust God, they believe. It just it hasn't happened, it hasn't happened yet. I don't know what your situation is, but I want to encourage you. Don't stop looking. Hebrews 11 and 1 says faith is confidence. Everybody say confidence. It's confidence, guys. Confidence in what we hope for. It's the assurance about what we do not see. I cannot see it, but I've got confidence. I've got so much confidence that I'm going to keep looking up. I'm going to keep looking up. I'm going to keep looking because I know if I keep looking up that pretty soon he is going to show up. I know he is. This, I, this might be a word for somebody just this right here. Do you know what faith looks like? It looks like looking. You know what hope looks like? It looks like looking. I'm not going to stop looking through disappointment. I'm going to keep looking. Even though it has not happened the way that I thought it was going to happen, I'm going to keep looking through tragedy. I'm going to keep looking. I never thought it would turn out this way, but I'm not going to stop looking. In Romans chapter 4, the scripture says that Abraham hoped against hope. Listen to me. He hoped in a hopeless situation. He kept hoping. Even after 100 years when everything screamed, give up hope, he kept hoping. Zechariah says that we can become a prisoner of hope. <laughs> I don't want to be a prisoner to doubt. I don't want to be a prisoner to fear. I don't want to be a prisoner to bitterness, but I want to be a prisoner of hope. Where I'm literally bound by my, by my belief that God is going to do what he said he was going to do. That my child is going to be saved. That my husband is going to be healed. That the doors are going to open so the servant comes back the seventh time. And he says, prophet, I, <laughs> I've actually got some good news and some bad news. Good news and bad news. The good news is, I did see a cloud. The bad news is, you know how that, that, uh, that, that massive rainstorm that you were talking about? That's, this is not that cloud. This ain't it. I did see a cloud. So we probably should just keep, keep praying. But here's what I want to show you. Elijah moved immediately on that small thing. He stopped asking. He stopped, oh God, I'm begging you. I know there's a little tiny cloud, but I, I want that big cloud. That's not what he did. We all want God to work big, don't we? But we have to learn to trust and believe even whenever he does not what we thought he was going to do, but does something much smaller because so many times in our life, miracles have to mature. We want God to like give us the whole tree and a lot of times he drops a seed. That frustrates us, doesn't it? We gotta learn to celebrate the seed because here's what I've learned after doing ministry now for gosh, 30 years. Small clouds can bring big rain. <laughs> Small clouds can bring big rain. <laughs> It's amazing what God can do with a small thing. I know you want to be completely healed, but how about we celebrate the positive scan that you received last month? Come on. I know you want your child to come home and be safe, but how about we celebrate the text that he sent and said something like, Mom, do you know where my Bible is? <laughs> I know you're wanting your marriage to be healed, but how about we celebrate the fact that there was a few words that you, you at least had some conversation last night. I know that you want to lead hundreds or thousands, but how about we celebrate that I'm leading a life group of, of five. 
Learn to move on the small things. Small things. They matter. God brings big things out of small clouds. So, of course, the end of the story is, as we read, that heaven, heaven's opened up. The drought was broken. The drought was broken. I mean, whenever, whenever that servant said there's a tiny little cloud, Elijah was like, we better get off this mountain. You better tell Ahab to get off the mountain or he's not going to be able to get down. It's about to rain. I don't know where you are tonight, whether you need to listen up, whether you need to change what you're listening to, or maybe you need to climb. Maybe you're not doing your part. Or maybe you've done both of those, and you've just been struggling with your faith, and you've stopped looking. I don't want you to stop looking. Keep looking. Keep believing. Keep trusting. I know it's going to happen. It may not be tonight, and it may not be tomorrow, but I'm going to keep looking. If it doesn't happen next week, I'm going to keep looking. If it doesn't happen in 2023, then I'm going to kick 2024 off looking. I'm not going to stop looking. What an amazing service that we just experienced. So grateful for the presence of the Lord that met us in the house today. And on behalf of our pastoral team, our leadership team, and our entire staff, We want to say thank you for tuning in to Christian Life Austin online. And we pray that this service remains in your heart and helps lead you on your next steps on this beautiful faith journey that you're on. And listen, this is a a very important moment in our service. This is not just something that we, we do, but it's something that means so much to us. If you've just been a part of our online service, we want to give you the opportunity to make Jesus the Lord of your life if you have yet to do so. So maybe you're watching in your living room, maybe it's in your kitchen, or maybe you're even on vacation. Here's what we know, that Jesus will meet you right where you are. In fact, Romans chapter 10, verse 9 says it this way, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So if you want salvation today, it's a simple but as powerful as confessing Jesus as Lord of your life and having faith that God raised him from the dead. So I wanna take a moment and just say a prayer and I want you to pray that as well. Maybe you're gonna pray words that that are your own words or maybe you're gonna pray exactly what I pray, but I I want you to pray something from your heart. And so let's pray together. Lord, we love you today. Thank you. Thank you for the word that has just gone forth that has, has turned our hearts to you in a new and a fresh way. And Lord, I know, I know there's people that are saying today that I don't know you in the way that I want to know you, that I've never made you the Lord of my life. But, but today that changes. Today, in this moment, right now, I want you to be my Lord and Savior. I want you to be the Lord of my life. I want, I want you to take control of every aspect of my life. So I surrender my heart to you today. I believe that you died, that you were buried, and that you rose again. And I believe that I'm ready to follow you with everything that I have from this day forward. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said amen. Come on, let me give you a big congratulations to everyone who made the decision to follow Jesus today. All of heaven is celebrating with you, and your church family is celebrating with you as well. But hey... We know that this is only one step. We want you to know that you're not alone on this walk. And we're not leaving you to figure it out all by yourself. We as a church want to partner with you through our core values of knowing God, finding freedom, discovering purpose, and making a difference in the lives of others. And we would love to help you take your next step. Whether it's water baptism, maybe joining a life group or getting plugged in, through serving with our growth track. We have everything that you need to make this process easy, accessible, and applicable to you and your life, no matter what stage of life that you're in. You are somebody at Christian Life Austin, and you are somebody to the kingdom of God. We wanna know what your next step is, and we also wanna hear from you if you gave your life to Jesus today. So here's what you do, just click the link in the description so that we can get connected with you. Again. Thanks so much for tuning in and we can't wait to see you in person at Christian Life Austin.